Now the timescales involved in evolution of species are entwined really tightly with Earth's geological timescale, and as the conditions of Earth change, all of the life it supports must adapt or it perishes, right? The geological timescale provides clues about the order in which all the rocks were laid down, the movement of the Earth's crust due to plate tectonics, continental drift um, from the large, the large land mass we started with, and the development of all life on Earth through the fossil record. Now we're talking a scale here that is billions of years. The Earth is approximately 4.6 billion years old, of the first life appearing about three and a half billion years ago. So because we're talking about a time frame that is so huge, we need to break it into manageable chunks. The 4.6 billion years are divided into eons, which are divided into era, era into periods, into epochs, and then into ages. So we're still talking about large chunks of time. We're talking about millions of years in size. So you'll often see things written as MYA or million years ago as the unit. And these time periods are really split up based on geological events that occur, such as the change in the composition of rock layers. Sometimes they're based on biological changes that were seen, so the appearance of different life forms or the extinction of major uh, populations of organisms like the dinosaurs. Now, prokaryotes appeared in the timeline about three and a half billion years ago with photosynthetic bacteria able to begin the change um, of the composition of the atmosphere ever so slightly. So while the first eukaryotes then appeared, you know, through the, um, the theory of endosymbiosis, which we've discussed previously, and it was about two billion years ago. So then multicellular organisms and animals start appearing. Now, if the climate changes and the Earth's geological features change, then the variation in the type of organism increased. The more life that appeared on Earth, the more the atmosphere changed with more oxygen appearing, and this created even more ecological opportunities. So when conditions change, opportunities arise to fill a new ecological niche. And because of this, some populations will undergo adaptations over generations and speciation will occur, resulting in the increased variation of life on Earth. And this speciation contributes to evolutionary radiation. Now, don't think radiation like, oh, it's causing genetic mutations. We're talking radiation like things are diverging outwards, things are radiating outwards. And this kind of evolutionary radiation increases increases taxonomic diversity and morphological disparity. So we might be talking about changes like continental movement providing new trace elements at the bottom of the ocean and that provides new aquatic ecosystems and you know climate change which increases and decreases temperature so organisms with different tolerance levels have more of an advantage or it might just be the change in the CO2 and O2 levels in the atmosphere. So the fossil record is how we draw inferences about the variation of life on Earth throughout the history. And if we look at the number of families um, seen in the fossil record over time, we can see constant variation throughout. And we can match up these changes with geological changes on Earth. Now we talk about evolution radiation stemming from speciation, which we can kind of see there is substantial increase in variation. If we have more families, we're going to have more variation in, in organisms. That makes sense. We can visualize that speciation using a phylogenetic tree like this one, which we have seen before, um, where one species or one common ancestor radiates, radiates out to become two or three or more separate species there. And another change that can create huge evolutionary radiations are extinctions. Now, extinctions of species uh, occur when the environment changes, but a species phenotype or reproductive strategies or survival you know, strategies don't actually adapt with that change. And this might be because of the actual environment conditions suddenly um, being outside of a tolerance range, or it might be because the change has allowed species interactions to change, like a new predator entering this ecosystem. Now, a mass extinction is an episode where a vast number of species are wiped out in a really relatively short time period. Now, keep in mind a time period is might be millions of years. But an example of this is the Cretaceous extinction, and uh, that was around 65 million years ago, and it wiped out the dinosaurs. Although their close relatives, the birds, did survive. You can hear some of them out the back there. It is generally accepted that this mass extinction um, was most likely caused by an asteroid hitting Earth and drastically changing environmental conditions, although I imagine some of you have your own conspiracy theories. We can see this mass extinction situation in these graphs where it says extinction rate has significantly increased, and you can see the spikes in that graph. And you can also see it here where it's got number of families, where suddenly the numbers of families drop really quickly in a short period of time. 
If you look at these diagrams graphing time, the variation, we can see where that occurs again. Here we've got the mean number of animals becoming extinct and you can look for the spikes, whereas here you've got the number of uh, marine families, so you have to look for the drastic drops. And immediately after a period um, of evolutionary radiation appears, right? If there's a drop in the number of families, we have to radiate out from that point. So the variation in the life forms increases as more niche become available to inhabit. So we're starting to see crossover between unit three and unit four here. The Earth has had about five major mass extinction events, and they're all fascinating to read about. And as we slowly, but in the grand scheme of time, you know, quite quickly, kill the planet and set the Earth on fire and all those kinds of things like that, we're talking, uh, there's a lot of talk that humans are causing the next sixth extinction or mass extinction. So yay us achievement. So on that pleasant note, please make sure you are looking at what we are trying to achieve in these lessons.